Greetings, Mechie 102. This is a video that is supplemental to the constrained motion investigation. I'm going to talk about how to create a graph or chart of a theoretical function or a prediction um, that is uh, not so simple as a straight line and that sort of thing. So how do you create the, the data points and the, the correct approach to creating a nice smooth curve in Excel to compare against some measured data? Uh, if you recall for this investigation, when we're looking at the acceleration ratio as a function of the mass ratio, it's predicted to be a hyperbolic relationship, so it looked like a hyperbola. Let me actually go to, I have a, a pretty favorite website called desmos.com. You may have seen this before. I'm going to click at the top and go to the graphing calculator. This is a really neat tool to be able to do visualization of functions and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to type at the top left y equals 1 divided by the quantity 1 plus x. Again, that's the form of the function that we expect where y plays the role of the acceleration ratio, x plays the role of the mass ratio. What's nice about this uh, interface, this app here, is that it immediately kind of uh, creates this graph automatically, just a, the mathematical representation of that. Um, I can put some labels on here on the x-axis. This is the mass ratio. The y-axis is the acceleration ratio. And I'll close that just I'm sort of complete here. Um, I just want you to appreciate though that although this is a, a, a nice system for doing this sort of thing, it's not uh, as nice as Excel as far as being able to fully control what the axes look like and where we place these labels and uh, although you can put data points on here too it's just not the method that we're using we want to use Excel but it's a nice way to kind of see what the function looks like of course uh, keep in mind from a physical perspective our mass ratio can't be negative so this whole graph doesn't apply It'd be more like a little bit of this uh, region here I'm showing you can zoom in and so forth too the point is, we want to be able to create something like this in Excel, this graph of uh, the prediction, this predicted curve that is the hyperbola, uh, and then overlay the measured data for comparison. However, Excel doesn't work like this. You can't just type in a functional relationship and have it automatically generate the function. So that's what we want to talk about, how we can do something like that, or at least you know the, the concept of this, have a nice smooth curve that represents the hyperbolic relationship. So back here in Excel, it's just a collection of uh, numbers here, really, when we're done in all these cells that we create charts or graphs from. So we need to create that. We need to create the, the set of numbers that would represent our function. So I might create a column of X values. And again, I'm just showing you in a generic sense Y versus X. So Y equals 1 plus X. And in a shorthand way of writing this, that would be to the negative one power. This gives me an opportunity to show you my clever little setup here with the subscript and superscript shortcuts and the ribbon up there in the menu. So I'll do a little quick formatting just as also a way, and then I'll do a thick bottom border here, I guess, just to kind of connect up to other things we're talking about right now. So let's say I want to create this and it's going to go from, well, again, in general, I could have this go over really. Um, Got to be careful that I don't try to bridge across the asymptote that's there, which would be in this case at, at negative one. So maybe I want this to go from minus 0.5 uh, further down to, or I say in the positive direction to some, say, uh, positive eight or something. Again, I know that this can't have negative values in the, the actual constrained motion investigation. I'm just showing you this as a, an analogy, as a representative way to create these graphs you'll have to use your judgment on how it's applied into the particular application you're applying it to. So anyway, if I pick a value of minus 0.5, then the y value is fairly simple. It's one divided by one plus the quantity, one plus that uh, value for x. And what I could do here then, I, I mean, the very crude way, you could put in, uh, type in minus 0.45, let's say, drag my formula down. Um, then actually Excel is smart enough if you select these first two X values click the fill handle and drag down it understands as a relationship there that it would actually create values for you so let's say I want to go I don't know we'll go down to uh, this is fine uh, I just want to show you the process this is not what I want you to come away from here with this I don't want you to do it this way in general 
double click and fill. So now I have a, a, a set of paired X, Y values. They're, they're points. If I select all of these, come up just some back up to the top here, then I'll say insert. And this time again, this is meant to represent, these are not measured data. These follow from a functional relationship, which, you know, that expression y equals one plus x to the negative one power, or one over one plus x, um, is defined by an infinite number of points. I could take as many as I like here, within reason, obviously. Uh, in any event, following with our uh, convention, we want to represent this with lines and no points, no markers. I'm going to use curve, but you see with the number of data points we have here, when you float over, it'll give you a, a, a preview. You can't even see the difference. So we could connect them with the straight lines. Uh, it still looks nice and smooth in the graph or in the chart because there's a lot of points here. Although there's some wiggle at the bottom, we could probably do a little bit better. But the point is we are using a uh, fairly large number of data points connecting with straight lines to get a smooth looking curve. That's what you want to do with your theoretical predictions. What you should never do is just evaluate the theoretical model at say the X values of the data you're comparing to and then connecting those dots. So for instance, let's say uh, for the constrained motion, I don't remember the total number of data points, but let's say we had six. So there would be only six measured data points on this chart for comparison. You should not just evaluate the theoretical prediction at those six mass ratios and connect those dots. It will not look smooth. Again, the theoretical prediction is defined over a much wider a domain of values for the mass ratio. You can use as many as you need to create a smooth looking graph. I'm gonna delete that chart. I'm gonna undo some of this stuff. I'll stop here. Let me get rid of the, those particular values in the table. Let's start again. Another way I could do this is think about, okay, I, let's say I want to use 100 data points to represent the theoretical prediction uh, between minus 0.5 and 8. Again, I realize the negative values wouldn't apply in, in the real case here, but this is just a, a representative um, concept. I could use the following sort of formula to create these x values rather than letting it sort of autofill. I could say this is equal to the next x value, equal to the previous. So I'm going to click on the cell plus, and then in parentheses, what I'm going to add in here in general here, that what I'm adding to the previous cell is the increment I want between the x values. That will, in, a, in and it's going to be, if I want 100 data points, then I want 99 increments because it'll be 99 divisions to get me 100 data points since there's one at each end of it. Um, I'm going to add that little increment in there, which would be if I want to go to a value of 8, I'm going to take 8 minus, and then I could do, um, I'll, I'll be kind of explicit with the numbers here, minus 0.5. So that's the total distance, quote unquote, that I want to go, divided into 99 pieces, and I'll hit enter. Whoops. Sure, I had to put a typo in there. Let me just double check, make sure that's great. 8 minus the negative over 99 done um, that is not right yes I see what I did I got the parenthesis in the wrong place I want it after the minus 0.5 I cleverly showed you here a reason why I, I really resist using parentheses if I don't need to because uh, and I end up sometimes not putting them in the correct place or if I forget something like that and Excel conveniently put it in that put it puts it in there for me, it doesn't put it where I want it. So consider the difference when I hit this. I knew it was wrong because it shouldn't go all the way to 7.5 in that uh, one step here. It should be only a tiny change really from the previous. Uh, do be aware, Excel follows order of operations. So it, it will do the additions and subtractions after it does division multiplication unless you put parentheses in there. So let me now show you the idea. So now I can just drag this down just from the single cell. And if I show you a formula further on here, see it keeps going to the previous one and adding that little increment. So now what I could do is just drag this down till I end up with a total of 100 points in X, which is gonna be like uh, row 104 or something like that. And I gotta go one more to eight. So now I know I've got 100 data points and should be 100, might be 101. Sometimes my counting gets a little off there. If I select all of these, Come back to the top. 
insert, I'll do again, chart, no markers, just straight lines. So similar result, a little bit of wiggle down here, but not bad. So I'm still not really where I want to be. So this would be fine. You could you could stop at this point. You've created the values. If this uh, this range of values here going from an X of minus, minus 0.5 to 8 is what you want, you could certainly be done, and there's nothing wrong with that, however you get to that. I just want to continue to, to show you here. There are some ways we could kind of automate this to make a pretty neat way um, to be able to on the fly adjust to maybe changes you want in the, the values that you're graphing or charting here, um, especially depending upon what kind of measured values you might put in if you had those. So another way we could do this, and I also like this because it really shows the automation capabilities of Excel. So maybe I didn't want to go to eight. If I came back to my first formula at the top, maybe I only want to go to six. So I can change the value from eight to six in my first formula, I hit enter. And then if I copy that all the way down, notice it redrew this and now it only goes to six, which is pretty handy. If I wanted to change where it started from instead of minus 0.5, maybe I want to start from one. So I can change that in the first cell. I have to make sure I change it also um, in my second formula. And here I'm actually going to get rid of the, the parentheses. I don't really need them, so I don't have the negative, right? So I can fix that. And now we have it going from 1 till 6 uh, for the x values. So that's pretty handy. Although notice it still took a little bit of uh, fiddling here and making sure I updated formulas and so forth to make it do that change. Let's consider one more way that I think is probably the, the definitely the best way uh, if you want sort of a full automation on here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and delete my graph and let me start over again. I'll come all the way down and erase all of these just so I start fresh. Notice that when I entered that formula, I was putting in there what I wanted to be my upper limit and what I wanted to be my lower limit. The way I had just done that formula, I kind of embedded, I absolutely embedded those numbers directly in the formula. What I prefer to do is to be able to just refer to those numbers from um, cells. So I can get a reference in there, and then if I change the numbers in the cells, everything will automatically update without changing formulas. So we actually, just for convenience, I'm going to insert another column. And I want to put some limits or some labels over here on some values. So let me say uh, I'm going to make a plot min and say equal. And then I'll make a plot max. These are just labels that I'm going to have in these cells. So while I'm doing this, I'm doing a little bit of formatting too. So you can see I want to, I like to, when I do this, to make them uh, right justified. And I'm going to enter some new ver numeric values in the cells next to those labels. I'm going to make that left justified, both of those left justified. And let me put in here one, let's say, for the plot min. And I'll stick with the values I last did, one to six, let's say. Okay, maybe I'll uh, shrink this column just a little bit D so it gives some space, but it's not huge. Here's the process. So I want my X values to start at plot min. And eventually when I'm done, I want to be able to change the values in plot min and plot max, have everything automatically update in my columns of values for X and Y, and in turn have everything automatically update in the chart. That's my goal. So I want X to start at, I'll say equals, the value in the plot min cell, enter. The next thing I'll do is I want, as I was doing before, I want this value for x that's in the next row to be equal to the previous, plus I want to divide up the total expansion of this, the, the total, um, really it's the domain of the x values into, I'll still stick with say 99, or maybe I'll do 999. Why not? Excel can certainly handle that. Again, even though that may be overkill to show this, it's why not? I can use as many points as I want to make this as smooth as I want. Excel will have no problem with a thousand numbers. Uh, I'm trying to really uh, emphasize here that you evaluate your theoretical predictions at a large number of points, not just the ones that you are comparing to measured. So parentheses, I want the total expansion of this. So. I'll click on the plot max cell, and I remember I'm going to copy this formula. I do not want to change where I'm getting that max from. So I'm going to hit F4, put the dollar signs in, minus the min. Again, I'm going to hit the F4 key to put the dollar signs in, or you can put them in manually if you need to. Divided by, and I'm going to say, uh, let's do the 999. So I'll have a thousand data points. Enter. 
So now all I need to do is copy this down. And you know what, before I do that, just so it's not some uh, really obnoxious number of data points, uh, decimal places here, let me select the two cells and I'll go up to the number uh, menu here in the ribbon. Uh, and I'll only put maybe, I'll, I'll show the, I wanna be, maybe I'll show four. Again, I'm making these up. These are, these are theoretically exact. So I could show as many decimal places as I want. Maybe I'll show four just so that I can clearly see them changing between the values. So now I need to copy, I'm gonna drag this down um, 999 times. So this will be down, you know, quite a ways down. Close to a thousand if I watch the row numbers. Again, this is really overkill for this, but that's fine. I do know I want it to go to six, so I may not hit the exact right number, but I'll drag it down a ways, see what I get, and I don't need all of these, so I, I should delete these to get me back to the number. Should hit six in here exactly, right? Because there, if, if, I, if this was divided up properly, at some point it will exactly hit that upper limit, okay? back up and now I'll double click to put my formula down and now I want to select all these to, to create the chart or the graph show you another trick here uh, I'd like not to have to drag down this entire selection so if I select the top two cells if you hold uh, the shift key again this is on Windows I apologize I don't know what it is on the Mac shift and and the down arrow it will automatically select everything in those columns until it hits a blank column a blank row excuse me so there we are down a thousand five you could if that doesn't work or you don't remember or whatever obviously you could manually just select those two uh, columns so let me come back up to the top and again you may want to just use 100 points or something that this this curve this graph is not so complex that it wouldn't be fine with 100 and then of course it wouldn't be so difficult to select them anyway but insert charts there is our our nice smooth graph and you can actually see some of the wiggle is gone now because there are so many points in here it's nice and smooth but here now is the genius of this if you change your minimum to two everything automatically updates. If I change my max to, I could do 11 for whatever reason, everything automatically updates in there. I didn't have to change anything except those limits. So this would be great if you create this on a chart as a theoretical prediction and you had overlaid your experimental data and you wanted to adjust the min and max of your theoretical curve. I like to choose it so it's a little bit more on the left and a little bit more on the right expanded beyond the experimental data so it shows a little bit of the trend beyond again just where your measured data appear so i didn't create any labels on the axes here i didn't change a chart title or do any kind of formatting of that that's all stuff you should know at this point to do i just wanted to show you the process uh, i think you'll find this quite useful for your work in mechie 102 thanks